So in this video, we'll take a closer look at this soldering iron handle from Yihua. This is the C245 that you can use with the 9A2 base station, and these are just a ripoff of the JPC handles. The T245, I believe they're called, and these are all the tips you can get directly from Yihua. You can, of course, just buy JPC tips, the original one, or you can also find other types on AliExpress or other places, but these are just the one from Yihua themselves. So this video will just go over the handle and the tips, and also try to connect it to one of the stations. So first off, let's just get into the box. And it took around three weeks or so for it to actually get here. I live in Scandinavia, and it was shipped from China. You can only get these handles directly from Yihua from China, or at least from China. You cannot buy them in Europe, like you can with the C210 and the base station. You can get them within five day stations if you live in Europe. But this one has to be ordered from China. And, of course, it is a little bit bigger handle compared to like the smaller ones, the C210, because this is, of course, the C245. So this is a 120 watt handle. Uh, let me just get my C210 out here, see the size comparison. So we have the C210 here in the top, which is a 40 watt handle. And then we of course have the C245 here and below, which is a 120 watt handle. So three times as much power with the bigger handle, but it's not really three times bigger. As you can see, it is definitely bigger, but still very small. Let me just compare it to like a Hakko style soldering iron here which is also from Yihua, but I believe it's exactly the same as the standard Hakko style soldering handles. But you can see there, it's actually still smaller in diameter compared to that. So you feel like you can be more precise with this one compared to like the Hakko style one, also because the tip sticks out quite a bit from those, versus on something like the JPC ripoff here, where the tip doesn't really stick out as much. So nice foam protection here in the top, just to get a little bit of a grip and also a little bit isolation because it does get a little bit warm, not really that much. Plastic housing, of course, and the end here where the tip goes in, of course, have metal, and that also makes contact with the station, so it gets into a sleep mode whenever you put the handle back in its station or in its cradle, and nicely flexible here at the end, and I believe this is a silicone wire or at least a very soft wire, so very flexible, definitely. Very nice, flexible enough for me at least, as a an hobbyist. And in the other end we do have the screw-in plug. This is of course one of the differences between JPC and the Yihua stations, because if you use the Yihua stations, you have to use the proprietary plug, or at least a different style plug than the JPC, so you cannot just get JPC handles and plug them directly into the Yihua stations, at least not the 9A2 stations. So these are specific from Yihua, and you can only really use them with the specific station from Yihua, which is the 9A2. And I do have two of these stations, one of them already set up here, that I'm using with the smaller handles. And then my plan is to use the green one here with the bigger handle, just to make it more convenient to switch between the two. So if I want something a little finer, I can of course just get the black one here. If I want a little bit more heat or a little more wattage, I can of course get the big station here, or the big handle rather. And these stations are just so inexpensive. And of course you can find links down in the description below if you are interested in either of these devices here. So first off, let's just have a look at the tip selection from Yihua. We have five tips in all. I ordered two of the pointed tips. I kind of regret that now, finding out later that they're really not that useful. I'm still learning here, but you have five different tips. Let me just get all of them out. So you have the crooked one, which is a very usable tip to apply a different amount of heat. The very pointy one, this is the concave one, which of course is just like a, like a needle here at the end. And then you have three different knife sizes or knife style tips. So you have the bigger one and you have one in between here and the smaller one actually the two medium and small sizes seem to be very close in size, but there are some differences there. The one hand right is a little bit smaller and these are fairly sharp. So it would be nice if they were a little less sharp so it won't like scratch your PCB. So all of them sharp tips. I would say decently well made, not exactly 100% straight sharpened, but yeah, I think they're fine enough for the price. And again, if you really want high quality tips, you should just go for original JPC tips. They'll last a little bit longer and they are made with higher quality materials and also to a higher standard. So these ones here, 
fine enough for a hobbyist like me, but of course, if you want to do very fine work, you probably just go and get the original one from JPC. But for the price, I don't think really you can go wrong with these tips. They're very inexpensive and definitely is nice enough. And let's just compare size-wise to the C210 tip. You can see the C210 here on the right side, and of course the C245 here on the left side. Definitely much smaller tip, which is also of course expected because it cannot really provide as much heat or as much wattage. So of course we have 120 watt here on the left, and we do have 40 watt here on the right. So these are definitely differences. So let's just attach one of the tips to the handles. Of course you should do this without the handle being plugged in or at least cold down. But it's very easy to use the station as well to actually attach the tip to the handle. If you have like a piece of plastic here, just remove that before installing it. I think it's just protecting it in transit and then can just plug it in. Of course, given that the iron is not plugged in itself, you can see here the cable it's not plugged in, you can just use your fingers, but if you already have the stations up and running, you should definitely not use your finger because it does get warm very fast. At least you need to be very fast plugging it in and you have to make sure it's all the way in. And that's what this here on the station is for. So you can just kind of squeeze it all the way in place and make sure it is all the way in like so. And if you want to remove it on the fly while the iron is hot, you can do so still when it's being on and heating. You can just kind of remove it by pulling it like so, and then just attach one other or the same one again here easily without ever touching the tip. So that's a nice little system. And in terms of how long it actually sticks out from the handle itself, you see that it does stick out quite a bit longer, but I won't really say that's long at all. You can of course compare to standard Hakko ripoff stations here. So it definitely is sticking out more than a C210 but not as much as the Hakko one. And definitely you can be very precise with this one as well, as well as of course providing a lot more heat for the surface you want to solder. Base there to the tip is around 4.2 centimeters and the handle here is around 1.6 centimeters and the length of the handle here to the wire is around 14 centimeters. So still a relatively small handle. I definitely feel like I can be very precise with this one. Of course, not to the level of the C210 is just so nice and small. And I believe these stations can actually also handle the smaller C115 handles. This station, at least it says so on the display, but they're not available from Yehua as of this video. Hopefully it will be so in the future. That would be nice to be able to plug smaller soldering irons into these stations as well. Plug it in, of course, you not just screw it in the back. Just make sure the little tab here is aligned with the little tab on the top of the plug. And there's also an arrow here on the top kind of indicating which orientation you should plug it in. So this goes to the top, like so, and then just screw it in place. Very easy. And let's just try and plug this station in. Of course, make sure you have the soldering iron already attached to the station before you plug it in. And definitely it's a little bit more wobbly in there. Fits quite nice, but the smaller handle just sits all the way in. And you can see here the C210 just fits a little bit better in here. Not really that wobbly. And when you plug it in, oh, install it into the base station. You just plug it in all the way here, all the way down to the handle almost. So nice fitment there and the bigger one doesn't go in all the way or as long. You can see they kind of rest against the top part here of the cradle, but not really an issue. I would say still nice and easy to get it in and out. Actually a little easier to get it in and out compared to the C210 because it doesn't really go in all the way, but still it should get into some kind of standby mode when you plug in the handle. So it will get down to like the 200 degrees Celsius. Let's try and turn this soldering station on like so. You get a beep and you can see in the display right immediately, it recognizes the 245 handle. Compare here to the C210. You can see over there on the left, you can see that it recognizes either the 210 or the 115. Like I said, the 115 is not available as of this video. I hope it will be in the future. That would be nice. And with the bigger handles installed, you can see it does recognize that this is a 245 handles installed in the system. So that's definitely nice. And let's just try and remove it and see if it will ramp up in temperature. Yeah, right out of the bat. You can see it does get up to the 350 degrees Celsius. Just put some solder on here. See if we can melt it. 
Uh, should be able to melt it. Definitely is warm. Let me set this to 380 degrees. That's kind of my preferred temperature with this kind of soldering tin. This is lead-free solder tin. So it definitely registers the power there, but yes, yeah, so far it has not melted anything. It's a little bit odd. It should just melt it, no problem. Let me just see if I can get something a little bit finer. This is 0.4 millimeter. Maybe it just needs to get it going. Hmm. Let's try 400 degrees Celsius then. Hmm. Doesn't melt anything. Does feel warm, but not super warm. So now I'm connected to the other solar station and you can see immediately it starts smoking. So it seems like we have a defective station here. That kind of sucks. Let's just see if we can actually melt it. It is at 380 degrees Celsius now. And now you can see yeah, no problem at all. For some reason, the other station just doesn't work. Let me just get this to solder or something. Yeah, it doesn't transfer that much heat with this specific tip. Let me try here and see if we can actually get some solder to flow on this big pad here. Definitely not bad. I thought it would be a little bit better, but let's try the bigger tip. Let's see if we can get a lot of flow going on there. So now we are with the biggest tip and we are reaching 380 degrees Celsius now. Let's try and melt some solder. And where should we go? Let's go over here. You can see there, it melts it immediately. So yeah, definitely have a defective soldering station. And you can see there, it transfers quite a lot of heat. It doesn't really flow all that well. Hmm. I was expecting a little bit better than this, to be honest. This is at 380 degrees Celsius. It should be plenty. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be able to transfer heat all that well. Let's just try one of the smaller pads here. And let's try and see if we can actually flow some solder here. Doesn't really flow that well. I was expecting this just to flow all over the place, really. Well, as you can probably see here, it doesn't really transfer that much modules to the board. Uh, you can kind of get it going, but this is a 120 watt iron at 340 degrees Celsius. Should be better than this, in my opinion. Let's just crank it up to 400 degrees Celsius. See if we can actually do a little bit better here. Let's just get it going a little bit and see if we can transfer some heat here. Yeah, we kind of get there eventually, but I had expected a little bit more from this tip, to be honest. At least first impression, not really sure it is really 120 watt. Let's see if we can actually melt this solder here. Should just eat it like butter. Definitely feel the PCB getting hot. Let's just add a little bit of flux here and see if that can actually help. Try again, let's just go down to 380 degrees Celsius. I think we're gonna ruin the tip. Too high temperature. Get some solder on the tip. Let's 
get it going here. Definitely seem to melt it just fine. Clean it up a little bit. And let's try and actually get this going here. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it wants to like transfer enough heat to actually get this to melt. <clears throat> That's kind of disappointing. Let's try the Hako soldering iron. So we are 380 degrees on the Hako style tip. Let's just melt some solder and see if we're melting it just fine. And let's see if we can actually melt the same solder blob here on the PCB. And you can see it just cut through it like butter. Like so, that's what I was expecting with the other one here. But man, that's just strange. Why can't it just melt it? Really strange. If this should be 120 watt, I'm not really sure. I think maybe it's the same ballpark as the smaller handles, so like 40 watt. I'm not really able to melt big solar blobs like this. Let's try again. Let's see. And even the display here doesn't really consume that much power, so it should be much higher than that. I'll just try to train for a lot of heat. Hmm. I am definitely disappointed. Maybe that's why they don't sell this soldering station with the big handle, because it can really maybe deliver enough water to actually effectively use this tip. This is definitely not 120 watt. I'm just holding it steady and it just doesn't melt anything really. Uh, that's that's really bad. But yeah, at least my first impression here, I'm not really sure I would recommend it. You see the nice solar work there. It was supposed to reflow this solar blob. Just couldn't transfer enough heat. But the PCB is very hot, but the solar just didn't melt. So yeah, I'm not really sure I really would recommend it. At least here in my first impressions, I don't actually think that these solar stations can deliver enough energy or not wattage to actually supply enough power to those bigger handles. So I think the sweet spot is probably the C210. That's kind of disappointing. I was also hoping to be able to get a lot of wattage with the bigger handle in the same station, but you'd probably just stick to the smaller handles. Really, these work just fine. Man, the bigger handle here. I don't think it's anywhere close to 120 watt. I don't think these stations can really supply enough energy for this iron to actually be able to deliver 120 watt. So that's a little unfortunate. So I'm not really sure I would recommend it. Maybe your mileage will be different than this, but definitely seems like either this is a defective handle, but what are the odds that I both have a defective station and a defective handle? I don't think it's really that likely, but that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.